everything to the wood. I'm about to cut $10,000 off this truck. Oh, you didn't just bring more wiring over here. Size-wise, this 2019 Polaris is a small vehicle for us, but it's got some big issues. Heck, having this thing, man, this thing was in a tornado. Anything we can do to help you, man, and help your granddaughter, you know we're in. If this ain't hooked up correctly, nothing's gonna work. Oh, no way! I'm Bill Carlton. I built my first truck when I was 16. And ever since, me and my guys have been out here creating with our hands. Building the biggest, lowest, baddest custom trucks and cars in the game. People don't come here for what they need. They come here for what they want. This is Texas Metal. Yeah. You know what better way to have a little family bonding than having your kids help you cut up a car? We finished taking off all the pieces off of this car for our donor build. And before I send this thing off to get scrapped, I figured I'd give my kids a little lesson on how to use some tools and cut some metal. I never really had that except for just like, you know, pumping my arms out, but that's all right. It makes a good workout. And I really like working out, so I guess it's fine. Good. A couple little more pieces, whole roof's gonna be off. You can go out on your side. Got it? Yep. What do you think? Hey. First yeah. convertible? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a good family day. We cut up the car, and so now we're just gonna have some fun. Test it out. Yeah. Hey, where's Cleve at? Uh, Cleve! You know, I can't really tell you personally how many donuts I've done in this parking lot. You know, maybe a million or so. You know, but this is Cleve's first, and he seemed really happy to be here. Why'd you think I was gonna hit it? <laughs> Man, I love seeing this thing together. You know, after being so long, just a cab huh. on the lift. Feels like we're getting some things done. It's been a lot of hard work. You got that right. I mean, just getting this thing apart's a lot of hard work. Yeah. We're months into making this 2020 Denali 3500, one of the first ever body drop in the world. The owner wants to haul some of his other show cars with it to SEMA. So we had to put more engineering into this thing to make it perform even better than he wants. With a body back on the frame, it looks like we're almost done. But I can tell you, we're a long ways away. Oh, Lord, what are you guys trying to pull a house or something? That's serious. Damn right it is. I mean, this transfers all the weight from a trailer. Sometimes it could be 20, 30,000 pounds of stopping and starting. It goes to this right here. So we can put a house on there. Absolutely. <laughs> Just from the start of this, getting it on the lift and Tearing it apart was a major job. You know, laying the chassis out and building the chassis on the table, getting the frame underneath this, you know, rear suspension, hitch, cutting the cab out. Man, just to get to this stage is huge, huge amount of labor. I know. <laughs> this is not just double work or triple work. It's not even quadruple. What's after quadruple? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> The finishing work on a build like this build, but the small details, they take a lot of time. Now that we got the foundation, we can build the front suspension and huge wheel tubs to tuck those big old 28 inch wheels. Color match the frame and plastics, create a fully articulating speaker system in the bed, and finding space to put everything back together under the body. And that's rewiring, reconnecting, rebuilding, making this truck 100% brand new again, just like it is. We got a lot of work done but there's still a whole lot of work to do and a whole lot of parts to order. So let's get to it. Let's get it. At 
this stage of the build, it's all about making room underneath the body to cram everything back in. So Tim and John are getting started to making room for these big old wheels. The name of the game is bigger the wheels, the lower to the ground. And you know as well as I know, everything's in the way. Especially the most important thing, <laughs> the, brakes. the brake system. <laughs> We're not going to cut the factory fender tabs off. We're going to use those to line everything back up. That way it'll look factory from the outside and it'll keep all the factory gaps exactly the same. We're going to build back a support with some DOM. We need something that's going to keep all these tabs 100% where they're at. Here, here, and all this will gap back perfect. The hood will shut perfect. Everything will stay right. You know, I've seen a lot of custom builds where they made something look good, but Later on down the road, it just didn't hold up. Yeah, so we gotta bend it down, huh? We gotta have form and function, stability. What good is a cool car if you can't drive it down the road safely? Pretty damn good. That's gonna work. That clears the hinge, clears the hood, supports that. Clears the gas shock too, so we don't have to mess with that. I think everything's gonna be perfect. I'm holding the fender tabs right to the support to keep everything in line. Now we got our new support in there, we can remove all of this to get our new big wheel in there. There you go. Man, this is the best part of the build. I'm starting to see this thing getting put together and starting to look like a whole truck again. You see the door gap, it all lines back up perfect. Now you have to sit there and try to make the fender mounts. Yep, and it's looking real good. While Tim and John are making good progress on the 2020 Denali's front end, I'm going to get started making articulating speaker brackets for the bed. You know, just having a drop dually, big wheels all the way on the ground just isn't enough. You just got to have that that mounts four speakers in the bed and articulates up. So when he's parked, he can actually raise it up and the sound projects over the bed and out to everywhere. I took a couple of quick measurements off the bed with the bed cover, with the wheel wells, and made a quick drawing on the table so I know exactly what kind of room we have to work with and we'll come up with some kind of mount that's gonna be cool. Just a lot of figuring out to do. You know, there's a lot of pivot points, a lot of measuring. We'll see what happens. We need to make one a little shorter to maybe kick it up a little bit or kick it down a little bit. You can play with all those little angles, all those little pivot points to make the speaker do whatever you want to with it. So once we make them act right, we can duplicate that in bars and pipe and bushings. Man, that's something totally different. You know, most people just have it where it just pops right out, but having some articulation like this to where it actually moves and it's got function to it, man, that's that next step. I'm using the measurements from the rods and bolts to make the final articulating arms for the speakers. So I have something like, something like that. I want these things quick, so Max and Jesse are going to weld these things out, all while me and Jamie are going to make the frame to hold all these mounts to the bed. You know, it's one thing to lay it out on the table and make little bitty mounts, convert that over to the, the bracketry and drill holes and spend time making all the pivot points right and the little bars right. You're putting it all together, you know, there is some question there if it's really going to work. So right now we're going to put it together and actually see if it's going to do what we need to do. And you just have that in your head, just popped it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Figure it out till it works. See what works. Speaker about here, I know. facing out, then coming out over the bed. It's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool. We finished fabricating the gooseneck on the 2020 Denali. Now Tim's gonna make room for it in the bed. All right, now we're to the point we need to put this bed on the new frame. But as you can see, the notch of the frame and the gooseneck hitch is going to stick through the bed. So what I'm going to do right now is just cut a hole out in this bed floor so I can get it on there, and then we'll go back and figure out how we're going to fill this back in. When this truck's laid out all the way on the ground, you'll be able to walk up, look in the bed, and the gooseneck hitch and the bag mounts are going to show through the bed floor. And you get to appreciate all the work that went into this frame. And it simply gets covered up. All right, now we have a hole. I'm about to cut $10,000 off this truck. We 
got to remove all this because once that truck lays down on the floor, we need room for that big tire to reach all the way up here. Now we get all this out the way, now we got plenty of room for these big wheels and tires. The 2020 GMC Denali 3500 is a dually, which means it's got four wheels in the back. So that means we need to make even larger wheel tubs in the bed to fit those 28 inch tires. This is how we roll our sheet metal to get the same radius as our wheel tub. And we need a little bit more. Woo. So the tub has to be extra wide to accommodate both dually wheels on the back of this truck. So what we're gonna do is butt weld the new piece to the old piece. And what that is, is fitting them tightly together. Just to let you know, welding around magnets sucks. These magnets hold the pieces of metal together while I weld, which is good, but because the welder uses a metal wire, that same magnet disrupts the arc connection. So it could be a little tricky. Welding is nearly impossible. John officiated the marriage of these two pieces of metal. Relationships have ups and downs and bumps. So me, I'm a marriage counselor. I'm gonna smooth this out. Damn, Tim, you on fire today. Things got a little smoky around here. What's up, Doug? Hey, Bill, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. In the custom car business, it's always good to get those repeat customers. We worked on Doug's 48 GMC truck years ago. Good to see you, man. What are we doing with this thing? Well, we're not doing anything to the truck. We're going to focus on the most important thing. That's my granddaughter's players. That? This. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. I know it don't look like a players today, but it used to be an oh, EF4 wow. tornado in South Mississippi. They lost everything. Destroyed the house, destroyed everything, lost all of her toys, clothes, and she lost her players. And this was the most important thing that she was looking for after the tornado. So we've got to get it fixed. The tornado hit my daughter's house with our three grandchildren in it. Scared me and my wife to death. We were here in Houston. She called us right before it happened. And then it was 15, 20 minutes before she called us back and told us they were okay. Very scary moment. When everything was done, and this was the first thing she went to looking for. And it was 250 yards away. And you can tell it uh, may have barrel rolled once or twice. <laughs> yeah. They have been through a lot. So that's why this place is so important. You know, we customized a lot, a lot, a lot of vehicles in all different stages of the customization, but never, never one that's been through a tornado. I don't know if there's really much hope for this thing, but we're definitely going to see what we can do. I think the first thing we need to do is actually get this thing down and really see what we got to do. Okay. You know, get that frame back straight. I know there's probably going to be some frame issues and put new plastics on it, make sure that all bolts back together right. right. And I think instead of just bolting the factory cage back on just build something cool for her. make it so she's you know not only looking cool but safe also absolutely she she loves this thing and whatever you do is going to make it that much better bill yeah this thing's going to be cool you know this isn't the normal project we do around here you know but being so close to the can do anything we can do to help you man and help your your granddaughter you know we're in man i appreciate you bill that's why i come to see you You know, a job like this is what I would normally turn away, but, you know, when an old friend brings it in and it has such a heartwarming story, you don't have any choice but to, but to help out. Looking at this after it's been in a storm the way it has and just seeing the steel being mangled and torn, it's meant to take abuse, get rolled over, but it just shows you how much power the wind has, and I'm just happy no one was hurt in that. I'm going to pull this into the shop and everybody's going to go, what are you doing? What's this here for? But once they hear the story and they hear who it's for, I know they're going to be all in. By the time we get a small project, right? <laughs> the heck happened to this thing? Look, somebody jumped it. Man, this thing was in a tornado. The oh, wind wow. did this. Chunked this thing a quarter mile. You know, it's Doug's granddaughter. She just cherished this thing. This was her favorite thing to have, right? And they lost their house. They lost everything. So we need to bring this thing back to life. 
What I want to do is get it in the shop so we got a nice level surface. Let's take what's bent and what's straight. Yeah, I'm sure once you get all this off, all kind of stuff's going to be... Yeah, I'm definitely afraid of that, but it ain't something we can't handle for sure. You know, once we get everything back straight, I want to go back with new plastics, bumpers, front and rear. And we'll probably wrap the new plastics too to, you know, to not have the... Everybody else look? Exactly. If we're going to do it, we might as well make it special for it. We'll put doors on this thing, you know, to get rid of that little plastic netting. That helps with safety, but that's not as safe as doors on this thing. You know, we'll top it off with some lighting and, you know, she had speakers underneath here, but we'll add some, some cool ones to it. Once we get all the bottom of this thing all nice and straight, we'll go back with a custom cage, just a one-off, and we'll make the roof a little longer, stronger, meaner, and a lot cooler looking. It's really cool to do this back for her and make it all back to something she really enjoyed. It's gonna be better than Christmas for her. It'd be nice to be a part of that, right? Yeah. Doug's definitely gonna be grandpa of the year. I might adopt him <laughs> as my grandpa. Keegan and Joey are gonna tear this down so I can see what shape the chassis's in. Keith, you ever had one of these in here, kid? Uh, not something like this big, but like maybe like a little small, like a little tiny 4x4. Four four. A little small one? Yeah, right around every once in a while. You got it? Yeah. We got a little tweak to the rear of the frame on the little side-by-side, -side, so what I'm gonna use is the porta power here. It's basically a, a slender jack, so you put little pieces together till it fits into place, put it in between the frame and the bent part of the frame, jack it up and just push the frame right back into place so it'll be perfectly straight when I'm done. Double check the level real quick on that. It's riding the line a little bit, but it's still in between the lines. Well, you want it on the money. Well, it's off. It needs to come up on this one. This one? Up? Yes. Come on up, 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 up. Right there. You know, being thrown through the air like it was, this frame is in better shape than I thought it was going to be. Check it right here. But even small bends to it can have huge consequences. It's kind of wobbly on that thing. So our first step, we need to straighten it up. Go up on it? Yeah. Go up, Mo. Up. Okay. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Let's get a we want long piece of tubing and stick right here. We went just a little too far, so we can get, out, get a little tweak. Okay. You know, so we're jacking it up, pushing a little bit. So we got to push it up just past level, so when it, the tension releases, it comes back level, right? Well, we went just a little bit too far, so we're just going to get perfect. Man, do that one more time. I think you got it. Perfect. Size-wise, this 2019 Polaris is a small vehicle for us. But because the tornado literally threw it a quarter of a mile, it's got some big issues. You know, Jamie fixed the axles, we straightened the frame, so now we can put on new plastics and doors. All right, Jamie, I think we're ready for the door, man. Well, let's see what happens. Try to get the other door on. Oh, wow. Hey, Bill. Huh? Everything's in. Man, it's that much further than it's supposed to be. Thirty-four and three-eighths to the center of that hole. That one ain't in the same shape. That's thirty-two and an eight. Uh, yeah, it's been a little bit. It's got a belly. <laughs> Typical job, you know, you thought was cut and dry. Okay, this is bent. Let's fix it. Done. Everything should line up, right? Well, that's not the way it works. Start putting the doors on it. Notice, whoa, this door overlaps the body by an inch. So trying to just bend it back an inch. Go pull it. Let's get this thing off of here. Huh? Get it loaded up on the back of the wrecker. Okay. We'll strap it down and see if we can pull it with the winch. Cool. Tail forward. We got the front and the back of the frame level. But in between there, parts of the frame are still tweaked. So we're gonna use the wrecker and the winch to stretch the body, all while keeping the integrity of the frame. All right. It's the only tool I can think of. We can pull at multiple points at one time and still hold everything from the back, strap it down to the wrecker, so we'll see what happens. Here, come do this real quick. Let me look at it. Okay. Ready? I'll tell you when to stop. Just okay. as easy as you possibly can. All right. Okay, do it again. 
Hello? Hi. You know, the wrecker and the winch definitely done its job. Door's got plenty of room now. We definitely tweaked it, moved it forward. You know, the next thing is getting everything back nice and level so it all lines up and everything will be on the money. Over on the other side of the shop, Tim and John are finishing up the extra. Needed extended rear tub. Now I can get this place in the bed, clamp with a straight edge across the top, get it tacked in place. Well, that fits nicely. I like it. Now we got both the tubs in place. Now we can weld these things fully and get ready to move on to capping these edges and putting the bed back on the truck. We have the tubs made here. Now we need to make the filler go down to here. Something to keep the dirt out of there, the mud, the water coming out all the way. This will really just enclose the wheels and is add strength and structure to the tub. So we're gonna tack it, when we come back and grind it, it'll all look like one piece, like it wasn't made out of three pieces. This whole tub will look like a one piece you just set in here. Because the Denali needs to look like a show truck and perform like a work truck. We need to build a massive set of control arms to keep all that weight going straight down the road. Building control arms for a bigger truck, you want to have a stronger arm than your typical square body or regular half-ton pickup truck. That's why we use thicker material, bigger, better bar joints to be able to accommodate not only the weight of the vehicle, but the weight that's actually attached to the back of it as well. Let's go ahead and throw the wheel on. Make sure when it see what it looks like laid out too. Yeah. The top of this bar is going to represent the ground level. Now put this on the bottom of the chassis. That represents our suspension being bottomed out completely, which in turn means the truck laid out all the way on the floor. Man, you think it looks good in there? You ought to see it from out here. It ate up half that wheel, put it all the way in there. It looks good. It looks real good. Does it look as good as me? <laughs> We sent the chassis off to powder coat. Now we can get to reconnecting, which is probably miles of wire, back into a space that's way more limited. So when we first got started with this truck, unhooking all of this, this, that, that, that was easy, very easy. But going back and putting it all in, laying all the harnesses out, that's really, really not fun. Oh, you didn't just bring more wiring over here. I was starting to feel good until I seen you walk over with that. Was that heavy? A little bit. Now I know why this is a one-ton. Need a one-ton just to hold up all the harness? Yeah. You got this, buddy. We're going to have to get that box to fit through there. We got to get everything plugged back in where it goes, because on this truck, almost everything works on a loop, where if this isn't connected, half the truck on that side won't work. If something's not connected, a little sensor in the back, this might not work, that might not work. So everything has to be plugged in just as this factory so the computer doesn't throw any codes or act like there's a problem anywhere. The custom frame for the 2020 Denali is back from powder coat. The white is gonna match perfect with the body. You know, the powder makes a really, really nice coating on it, and it gets in every crack and crevice. From the raw steel, raw tubing, raw pipe, to this, it's come a long ways. It looks totally different once you get some color on it. Definitely. It looks real good. The fact that it's color matched to the truck, it didn't look like you just took some frame and put anything. You know that frame goes to that truck on those wheels. Now we have everything unloaded, everything situated on the table. We can start assembling the frame, put the motor and transmission on it, roll it underneath the body, and put the body down. And it's gonna look good with the big billet wheels on it going down the road. <laughs> Fix all the tornado damage on the 2019 Polaris. Now Jamie and I are gonna build a custom cage from scratch. You know, the tornado definitely threw this thing for many, many loops, but you know, we got this thing back to where it needs to be. The next step is building the cage. So once the cage is built, tied into the framework of the little side-by-side, -side, everything is gonna be super strong and not bend or give. 
It's going to hold everything perfectly level and straight. So what I'm going to do first is just start bending some pipe up, get the angles right, and kind of step back and look at it, see what feels right, and just keep building upon that. Send it over here. Chop them for me, please. What I want to do is build a sporty custom cage. We obviously have to replace what's missing. So if we're going to do that, I want to make something, you know, a little bit lower profile, stretch it a little bit. Instead of just buying a new one online, you know, that's what we do. We build custom things. So not only, you know, put some safety back in it, some rigidity back in it, but put some custom coolness back in it too. I like the way how everything flows, man. It looks good and it's super strong too. She's going to be, she's going to be happy. Definitely looks good how you added this on, man. That just really makes it flow real good. <laughs> man, it's come a long way since this little side-by-side -side was tossed by the tornado. Jamie's making a custom aluminum roof. That fits nice. I'm real happy with that. And we had a custom wrap made for it. We're adding in a brand new stereo system and some light bars. I can't wait for Doug's granddaughter to see this thing now. So I'm really excited. And we finally got this project done. Today's the day we're going to give it back to some special little girl. You know, typically, I would usually turn a project away like this. But, you know, considering it's for Doug and what it means to Doug and his family, you know, I can't not help out on this. What's going on, Bill? Man, good to how see you. How you doing, man? This Hi. is my granddaughter, McKinley. Hi, how you doing? Good. I heard a lot about you. Grandpa's pretty proud of you. That's right. Your grandpa was telling me you were in a little scary little incident a while back. Tell me what happened. There was a tornado. You were in the tornado? Was that scary? Yeah. Man, I bet it was. Not only your house was totally gone, there was something you really loved was gone too, right? What was that? My buggy. The wind took it way far away? Down to our pond. In the pond? Oh, man. And it had no roof on it? It was messed up bad, huh? Yes. Yeah. Our buggy was only six months old, so time to see what Bill and the boys have done. I tell you what, we got you fixed up. Grandpa got you fixed up. You ready to check it out? Yeah. I bet you are. I bet you're ready to ride. You ready to ride? Yeah. Let's check it out. Let's see it. Holy cow, look at that, McKinley. <laughs> Man, that is awesome, Bill. Look at that. What do you think? I love it. You love it? Yeah. Golly. Wow. Bill, that don't even look like the same buggy. That's a good thing, right? That, yeah, that's a good thing. Man. Last time you seen it was a little, little squished, huh? Yeah. When the buggy came out, I was like, so excited to see it. Let's just say I was speechless. Man, that thing looks great, Bill. Tell me what all y'all did. Well, you seen yeah. the parts we had to work with, right? Yeah, I did. Once we put it on the lift, we started dismantling it. We really noticed the frame was hurt a lot more than originally thought. Yeah. You know, the plastics and everything were hiding a lot of damage underneath there. It had to replace the rear axle, replaced all the plastics. So we put new bumpers on it. And of course, it didn't have doors, it had the netting, so we right. put doors on it. What's that on the door? A tornado. A tornado? Had Pixel Works come over and they custom wrapped it. They designed this wrap for you. For you. you know. Where'd you get the name Doodle? Popsy gave it. To me. Popsy gave it to you? That's awesome. Man, that, it looks great, Bill. It really does. Build a whole new cage. We made all that in-house. Instead of buying, you know, just a That's replacement, right. we made it a little bit shorter and a little bit more laid back. Get it a little more cool look, sleek look. Made a new roof for it, made it a little bit longer. We made it all out of aluminum. Went back with lighting. You know, had to put the stereo back in it. And we put some little antennas on the back with lights in them. That's all. What do you say? Thank you. You're, You're very welcome. welcome. <laughs> Doug, I know this is special for you, and it's it's special for us. Man, that's nice, isn't it? Thank you for letting us be a part of this very special project. Over on the other side of the shop, the guys are making good progress on the rolling chassis. And now it's the moment of truth. Now we're to the point where you put the axle on the frame. So we're going to connect the four links to the axle, put the airbags up, and then we'll be able to run all the brake lines, the brake calipers, put the front wheels on. We're going to air it up and roll it out. But we have to put all the wiring on there, all the modules, the hook back up like it was factory. 
Now it's just the tedious part of just putting it all back together. of this 2020 Denali wants this low and loud. We got the low taken care of, now to make it loud by finishing up the articulating speakers. I got the hard part done. I got the lifting part that's gonna lift the speakers over the bed. You know, the next step to all this is making it motorized. So I'm gonna put an actuator on the back to, to lift this up. But I'm gonna try to do it with just one actuator and trying to make it lift evenly. That's another little trick too. So once that's all set up, put 12 volts to it, it should lift these speakers right up over the bed. It's pretty dang close. You know, the whole object of this whole bracketry is pushing the button and having the speakers come out of the bed, just project the sound and just have one more element to the whole overall project, right? What I'm gonna do is cut out a piece of two by two square tubing to make a bracket for the lower part of the actuator. I fixed it to the whole bracket, push a button, and it lifts up. Thing mocked up. The next step is putting some power to it and see if this actually works. You know, everything we build, you know, you have a general idea. And once you have the idea, then you start building plans. The main thing is just having the creativity of having the idea. That's a huge hurdle. Once you have that, it's just using your skills, using your tools, and just making it happen. Pretty cool. I got everything back from powder coat. We've got all the front suspension on, the rear suspension's on, brake lines are ran, fuel lines are ran. We're at the exciting point now. We can finally marry this cab to this chassis. It's like you do everything, and here's the keys to the new house. Now you can move in. You're set in? Is that it? Yeah. Just trying to line up the body to the body mounts. And we take a little step here to line up this bolt with this hole. And it goes straight down. It makes it much easier. Plus, the motor's so tight, the transmission's so tight, that you don't have a lot of room side to side. All right? Ready? Yeah. So we put it down. It's a little bit too far off. We'll hit the body, we could hit a module, could hit something else. So we take a little bit of time, line this up, drop the whole thing down. Watch your fingers. We made the cab to the chassis. We're about to do the bed to the chassis. All right, we gotta watch this bar. When we set this down, we can't scratch it. Come forward, come forward, down. All right. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Good job, guys. And now you can see the bed on the truck. You can see all the notch coming through that's going to hold the gooseneck. All that white shining through the black bed liner just stands out and pops really nice. Now we got about 40% of the wiring done. This thing got so much electrical going on. It's about a full day of work just messing with wiring. This is the main fuse box to the whole vehicle. If this ain't hooked up correctly, nothing's gonna work. This sends the power to where the power needs to be sent. Now, it should only go on one way. See that little green thing pop up? That means it's connected and tight. The plug from the bottom is seated properly to the pins at the bottom of this fuse panel. Man, we're at the final stages of getting this train for four days now. I'm so sick of seeing wires. Most of them are plugged in. Only a few left that are really giving me a hard time. There is just a ton of wiring and connectors that got to get crammed in the areas and tied down. Oh, man, so much stuff. On big builds like this, it's super satisfying to see it all come together at the end. 28-inch wheels, speakers attached to articulating arms in the bed, we're ready to show this to the world. I don't know about you guys, but I've been here seven years now. I've been here seven years also. Oh, yeah. Seven show them have, huh? This year will be 12 years. <laughs> That's 12 too many. <laughs> mm. You know, it's like anything when you start here. You know, Bill has his own way of doing it, and then you transform into Bill's way. Uh -huh. And then over time, you start seeing a new helper show up. 
Yeah. He starts doing it some other way, and you're like, ah, oh, that's the way Bill's going to want it. Yeah, so got to pass it on. Yeah. Everything will roll along a lot smoother doing it the way we've right. done it. It's definitely easier, you know, that we work together so much that we already know how this other person works. Uh -huh. you know, I know what you're going to do, I know how you're going to do it, and I can pick up right where y'all left off. It's we just, just practically became mind readers. We know what each other's, <laughs> yeah. we know what each other's doing and how to continue. Pretty sure I spend more time here than home. Can guarantee I've opened that gate and shut that gate more than Bill himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think yeah. you're right about that. The big day for the 2020 Denali is finally here. And JD drove all the way down from Kansas City to see what we've been up to. What's up, man? What's going on, Bill? Good to see you again. Dang, good to see you, man. It's a great day, huh? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Great day to pick up a dually? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I heard you got a little car collection yourself. Yeah, I do. I got a, you know, quite a few lifted trucks, a few hot rods. But never anything lowered. Yeah, nothing slammed. You know, what finally clicked and said, I got to have a lowered dually? I heard it was the world's first. I had to do it. You know, I see the, the lowered trucks. I've always wanted one. Nothing better than a lowered dually. The reason why I wanted a lowered truck this time is just pulling up to shows, being able to slam it down to the ground, you know, watch people's, you know, response. You know, just something different than the than the lifted truck scene that's been going on the last few years. I love lifted trucks, but, you know, close to my heart is lower trucks, and especially lower dualies. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. You ready to check it out? I am. All right, come on, Timmy. Let's check it out. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes! Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there! Yes! Hey, I wanted it low! You got it low for me! Yeah, that looks good! The white frame, color matched everything, sitting on the ground. This is beyond my expectations. I can't believe it. What you think? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you guys did an amazing job. It's awesome. Thank you, man. I mean, you know, Timmy, John, they got down on this, as always. Well, how we had to start is picked it up on the lift and just started unbolting and unbolting and unbolting. Once that was all done, rolled it out and just got busy. Built a whole new frame, bumper to bumper. You know, all the suspension, the air suspension on it, to building super strong control arms to a big, heavy-duty four-link for the rear. I mean, this is one of the biggest, strongest frames we've ever built here. I mean, it is overkill yeah but that's exactly what you want you know that peace of mind when you're going down the road you want to know that everything is 100 percent strong and and built the way it's supposed to be yeah and you, you guys got did it. it so it's absolutely amazing what these guys can do can take a brand new 2020 truck take the old frame out and build a frame from scratch i mean i'm just absolutely blown away jd what do you think about those wheels yeah i love them a 28 inch dually wheel on something that would... yeah the polish looks great on them engraved the richline motorsports in it perfect fit too Finish it all off, you see everything's been color matched. Got rid of all the black plastic. We smoothed all that out, painted it body color. And, you know, it just makes this truck look classy. Yeah, it does. It's not too much chrome, not too much white. It just all flows together. Let's check out under the hood. Yeah, yeah, let's check it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. I can't believe that you guys took all this out and got it back in right. and still made it look factory. Yeah, that's amazing. Man, it was hard enough getting the motor up to the cowl, much less everything else around it. It was it was a challenge. Yeah, I got the tubs in here, color match everything. I mean, it looks great. I appreciate that. You think this is cool. I really got something to show you in the back. Yeah, so yeah let's check it out. I'm excited to see it. Oh, yeah. God, that is crazy. You can see everything. Right? Got the gooseneck in here. That is amazing. That isn't just something that just bolts into the bed. That is all made directly to the frame. It's artwork made into the framework itself. Yeah, this should be able That's to pull cool. anything that I need to pull. Absolutely. Those huge airbags on there, just pick this big truck right off the ground with whatever weight you got on it. Yeah. You wanted some speakers in the yeah, back. Yeah, I see that but... you guys added some speakers in here. <laughs> show me the other part? Yeah, Timmy, hit it. You know, down here in the bed's cool. It's gonna make, you know, a lot of noise, but check this out. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, yeah, <laughs> look at that, yeah. It's just one more thing. People are just yeah. gonna go, what? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Not only, you know, the look of the truck is gonna draw people, when they hear this sound, it's just gonna project for 
a mile away. Yeah, that's awesome how it's got the actuator to bring it right yeah. up. I mean, you guys knocked it out of the park Man, on you this one. Something you know. one off. Yeah, I this think I got it. Yeah. Man, I mean, it's been this fun. is this is a dream come true right here. Hey, you know what? Maybe next SEMA I can find something a little bit harder for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> JD, you threw us a tall order, but as you can see, we came through, and I can't wait for the world to see it at SEMA.